Okay. Show me. Hi there, guys. Welcome back to the Dr. Sheet channel. Thank you very much for tuning in for my final review of this Diatone, the Roma F35, a monster quadcopter. Well, a monster, it's, well, maybe it is. Uh, it has monstrously big motors for a three and a half inch quadcopter, enormous motors. And that does have an impact, obviously, on its uh, performance. This is either a very fast quadcopter or a torquey quadcopter. Very nice. I've had a lot of fun with this quadcopter. So, final review. Also, I flashed Beat of Light onto this quadcopter. It came with Emu Flight. And by now I have Beta Flight on it. I like it better with Beta Flight. So I'll show you what uh, setting, what setup I've uh, used uh, on this quadcopter uh, and my tune, of course. So let's get into it. My final review of this quadcopter. And while well, I show you one of its uh, DVR recordings, one of my last flights with this quadcopter. Let me start by telling you what uh, the most negative thing about this quadcopter in my mind was or is, and that's its propellers. These Jamfan propellers, I'm not sure if they are horrible propellers, but they don't, they are not a great combination with this quadcopter because they tend to flutter at high RPM. So, especially for instance, if you do fast maneuvers, fast flips. The RPM of two of the motors will tend to rise, right, in a fast flip or be high. And then sometimes, definitely not always, I can go through uh, multiple packs without ever seeing it uh, happen, but sometimes the propellers flutter to the extent that sometimes the flight controller thinks that you have crashed, right. So you, you then actually don't crash, the flight controller then will switch temporarily into uh, outer level mode. And after that, uh, you're fine. But again, sometimes you hit a uh, an oscillation in the propellers, and uh, then the, the flight controller freaks out for a little bit. And obviously, you can replace the propellers, right? Um, I haven't again seen it happen often, but definitely it, it sometimes happens. And that's the most negative thing about this quadcopter, in my humble opinion. Then these motors. Uh, let's be honest, Dytone used these motors because they had intended to use these motors on another quadcopter, a Taycan, a new version of the Taycan. They scratched that project, they cancelled that project, and they had these motors. So what are you going to do with these motors? Well, they made a three and a half inch quadcopter and a very unusual quadcopter at that. Very unusual quadcopter. So it, that makes it a little bit of a weird setup, but it's definitely fun. Maybe it's fun because it's different. Well, uh, it's nice to have something different, obviously, but the other three and a half inch quadcopters you'll see, most of them will be light quadcopters, long range cruising quadcopters. This is not definitely not a, a cruiser. This is a torquey freestyle quadcopter. And at first, I thought that this quadcopter wasn't fast until I pitched up the camera more. And sure enough, it did become a quite a fast quadcopter. So very, very nice. But again, let's be honest, they uh, well they they were forced to use these motors on something else. In my mind, they could have used these motors on a four-inch quadcopter as well. These motors could definitely handle the four inch propellers. Maybe they can also make a four inch or well, whatever. Okay, I've also had quite a lot of crashes with this quadcopter by now. And you might have noticed that my FV antenna isn't completely straight anymore. And that's about it. I haven't been able to inflict any other damage than that. And yeah, not even... Uh, the arms, even though I still think that uh, Diatone should omit these holes in the frame. It's a single uh, bottom plate, right? So if you bre break an arm, you'll be replacing the entire bottom plate. And these mo uh, these holes uh, don't serve any purpose, in my humble opinion. And they are at the shear line of these arms. So why not just omit them and make the frame a little bit stronger? Yes, it does make the, the frame a little more versatile. You can use a 30 and a half by 30 and a half inch uh, stack for this quadcopter or for this frame. 
but why would you? For a three and a half inch quadcopter, not really needed, right? So I'd say definitely 100% recommended. Yeah, I don't uh, often uh, give you a 100% a recommended uh, conclusion to my review, but this is a lot of fun. You will definitely be buying a quadcopter you, you didn't have already. In fact, this quadcopter flies a lot like a 5 inch quadcopter. It has a little less weight, so it doesn't carry as far uh, in uh, split S's for instance. But speed and uh, torque, pretty similar to a 5 inch quadcopter. And I have kind of only flown the quadcopter on these here batteries, the Tattoo R-Line 650mAh 6S batteries. I have the 6, 6S version of uh, the F35. I have flown it once on this LiPo, the 850mAh 6S. Um, I preferred the extra uh, performance. Yeah, the flight time suffers a little bit, but still, with these you get a flight time of uh, easily 5 minutes if you want to. Probably longer if you cruise the quadcopter. And uh, if you were to add an action camera, you definitely want to use a 650 to keep the, the weight reasonable. So, um, like I mentioned, this is a 6S version. I'd say get the 6S version as, well, it obviously can fly on a 6S battery, but it can also fly pretty nicely on a 4S battery. And the 6S version on a 4S battery is a nice, very nice beginner quadcopter with room to, uh, to grow. So, yeah. In fact, uh, on 6S, it's a little bit of an uh, experienced or an uh, advanced quadcopter because it's hard to keep down low. You've got uh, a lot of torque, but not only that, the torque is down low in your throttle range. So it's hard, again hard to keep this uh, quadcopter low to the ground. And that's better or easier on the 4S with the 6S version. And with that said, let's have a look at my Betaflight setup. I'll uh, tell you as much as I can to uh, give you a, a how-to to flash this quadcopter from EBFlight to Betaflight. So mine already has Betaflight obviously, but what you need to do in EBFlight is go to the CLI tab, bottom left, and type div all. Hit enter and that will give you a list of all the settings for this quadcopter. And that's always a good thing to save all those settings in case you lose them for any, any reason. But at this point you hit save to file at the bottom right. And you then uh, save your settings as a text file to your hard drive. Right? And you can uh, do, then look them up uh, in case you, uh, again, in case you screw things up. So I hit cancel because I already have. Now, yeah, so then you say f update firmware in your case. And in, well, let's have a look actually. Um, this, the update firmware, you actually do in beta flight. So after you've exported your settings in EMU flight, that could be the last time you ever use <laughs> EMU flight. So then again, switch to beta flight, the beta flight configurator, and look up the board name, the board configuration or the firmware for your board. And that is the Mamba F722I2C. Mamba F722 underscore I2C. Select that. Then in my case, I've used 4.2.9 version 4.2.9 of beta flight so yeah if you want to follow along with my video um, this version will work maybe there's a newer version by the time you are watching this video and most often you can simply use that newer version but again if you want to be completely sure to have the same setup as, as I did 4.2.9 and then you hit a load a firmware at the bottom right. And at that point, the beta, the beta flight configurator will download that specific firmware. And then you hit flash firmware, which I will not do. 
Won't I? No, I won't do that. I, I already have uh, the configuration on the Scott Control, obviously. After you've then flashed the firmware and then reconnected, I'll reconnect. The first time you reconnect to the quadcopter, it'll ask if you want to apply default settings. You do. You want to apply default settings. So, and after you've selected apply default settings, you will then be back in the beta 5 configurator as you see it here. First time you hit calibrate accelerometer to make a baseline of the level position of your flight controller. So, after we've done that, let's go to the ports tab. And not a whole lot. I have the analog version, right? So the digital version will be different. And I'm not completely sure. Definitely you want to make a screen print of the ports tab in EMU flight before uh, beginning. However, the port setup is also in that text file you just saved. So that'll be your saving grace as well. Anyway, in my case, I have uh, the receiver on UART1. So serial RX on UART1 over here. Then my VTX is on UART3. So over here, VTX. IRC tramp on UART3. And yeah, I also have uh, ESC telemetry on UART6, but I don't actually use it. So you don't have to. And it was omitted in the base setup as well. If you want to imp slightly maybe improve the quadcopter, you can uh, set up ESC telemetry on the quadcopter, but I haven't. And it's not needed. So it'll make this, uh, this transition a little bit easier if you want to upgrade the quadcopter to beta flight and don't want to hassle with ESC firmwares as well. Again, you don't have to. Okay, and then hit save and in, if you have changed anything, your uh, flight controller will uh, reboot at this point. And after you've reconnected, you can go to the configuration and let's see. Yeah, again, I have ESC sensor uh, on over here, but it doesn't do anything. So, okay, other than that, D-Shot 600. And the default setup Diatone had made for the motor idle throttle was 4.5. So in uh, EWU flight, it was set to 4.5. I didn't like that much because at zero throttle, I didn't have a lot of control. So, for instance, if you're drifting uh, upside down with a quadcopter, um, I liked a little. I wanted a little more control, so I raised that to 5.5, which is incidentally the stock setting of Beta Flight. Okay, uh, pitch loop frequency eight works. An accelerometer. You don't need an accelerometer, but if you want to be able to use uh, outer level modes, you want to enable accelerometer. Then arming degrees. You want to set that to 180. That's in case, for instance, if you uh, are stuck in a tree and you want to rearm your quadcopter. If you don't set this to 180 uh, and the quadcopter is a level, you wouldn't be able to arm your quadcopter. So again, set that to 180. And personalization. Yeah, okay. So I have an SBUS receiver. So uh, be sure to set that to serial base receiver and SBUS. And I don't have telemetry. If I had used an RXSR receiver, I would have uh, had to enable telemetry. And I have uh, permanent air mode on, OSD always on, and dynamic filter on. And the quadcopter has a buzzer of its own, so you don't need to enable RX loss and RX set sliders. And that's everything for the configuration. So if you have changed anything, hit save and reboot, at which point your uh, flight controller will again reboot. Okay, power and battery, yeah, the only thing I've changed here, and that was the in uh, Emufly as well, the amp meter scale 183 over here, and that's the only uh, difference from stock over here. Then an important part, the PDE tuning. From this, you can actually see that the power to weight ratio of this quadcopter is very good. Almost stock be the flight, right? So I uh, raised the P and D gain a little bit. Um, not completely sure why. Let me see what's the difference. 
Yeah, um, a little less prop wash oscillation on descents this way. Again, you can probably improve the quadcopter a little bit minutely by uh, tweaking the filter settings by enabling ESC telemetry, but still, this setup works pretty nicely. So this screen is almost entirely stock Betaflight. The only difference is this, the PD gain slider to 1.1 and I've uh, entered feed forward transition 0.4 over here. Then I've entered my rates 0 0.75, 0 0.75, 0 0.77. But again, that's my, those are my personal rates. Very uh, user dependent if, uh, if you'd like those rates. Just experiment with that. Uh, it doesn't impact the performance of the quadcopter per se. Then the filters, I've set both the gyro filter manipulator to, and the D-term filter manipulator to 1.1. That worked out pretty well. Um, I'm not completely sure why I couldn't go further to the right. Maybe it's because the arms on this quadcopter are not super duper stiff and therefore transmit some vibrations into the center frame. I don't know. This, this worked. And also this is a safe uh, setup. So for instance if you were to run the bigger battery or a smaller battery this would still work. If you were to add an action camera let me see, uh, most likely if you really raise the weight of this quadcopter you will probably have to raise the master manipulator by 0.1. Again, if you were to add an action camera and you find that you have too much propos oscillation simply add the master manipulator a little bit. And most often that will solve your problem. At least with this, with this quadcopter, right? Okay, so modes, yeah, personal thing, right? I've set up some modes, set up modes to your liking, otherwise you could probably uh, copy the modes from the EV flight setup. Then the OSD, also quite a personal thing. Again, you could go ahead and copy the OSD from the EV flight setup, other than that, add information to the screen to your liking. Then the VTX, yeah, Emaflight doesn't have VTX tables, so this is definitely new. And you know what, I'll add uh, to the description of this video, I'll add a section with the VTX tables. So you can simply copy paste that section in the description of this video into the CLI, so copy it here and hit enter and then hit uh, enter save. And that'll uh, give you, well, your VTX table set up. And that's it guys, I hope that was uh, informative. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention that the quadcopter did fly pretty nicely on EMU flight, but better on beta flight, so it's worth the trouble converting it to beta flight, in my humble opinion. Again, you don't have to if you have never flashed a firmware onto a flight controller. You don't have to. It flies pretty nicely, again, on the EMI flight, but it's worth trying. And again, that's it. That's my verdict of this Diatone F35 uh, Roma or Roma F35. A three and a half inch freestyle quadcopter, definitely a freestyle capable, a very much so freestyle capable. Whereas the other three and a half inch quadcopters will probably, again, be mostly cruisers. There's nothing wrong with that, but it's a different kind of quadcopter. So yeah, a little bit of a <laughs> of a Frankenstein quadcopter, but fun nonetheless. By now, a lot of you might have this quadcopter already. Tell me in the comment section below what you think. I'd be interested to see. And if you are left with questions, also hit me up a comment down below. For now, I want to thank you for watching. Catch you on the next video. Bye bye.